Morning. 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 Good. Good. How are you? Good. How did the uh, guys come back and respond uh, yesterday? They were great. They uh, they they've got a great resiliency to them. They bounce really well. Um, we had a good training session yesterday, and we expect the same today. So I think the opponent helps. You know, you got a game that everybody's always focused on. So, um, but they were really good yesterday, and we anticipate the same thing today. Do you know the status of uh, Dante Moore and Ethan Garbers? Yep, they're both available today. Okay. It's no secret that uh, <clears throat> Dante Moore and Ethan Garbers UCLA made a move this week six years ago that led to you coming here. Is there any concerns on your part that this could be a similar situation developing this week? No, not at all. My concern is playing the USC, so that's all we always focus on. We always talk about being the most prepared and the least distracted, so anything that's not the next upcoming opponent is is, is just distracting us from what our, our, our job is, and our job is to take care of what we got to do this week in terms of our preparation for a really good football team. You uh, talked after the game about um, taking the blame as a coaching staff yeah. for that game. When you watched the film, what did that look like specifically? Like, uh, was it game plan preparation? Uh, how did that, and when you were evaluating? Yeah, obviously, when things aren't successful, you look at what happened. So, could you have called another play? Could you put them in a better situation to make a play? So, that's what I was referring to there. Obviously, we had four, three, four, three fourth downs that we didn't convert. So, you know, why didn't we convert them, and what could we have done better to convert? So. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty in any situation, but you always have to look at it. You know, just stick your head in the ground and say, "Hey, we, you know, we, we did the right thing, and we should have done it." And you look at it, and we should have passed in those situations and play action, something like that, to give us a better opportunity to make a play. You know, at <clears throat> halftime and early in the fourth quarter, the crowd obviously uh, voiced their displeasure. Uh, have you felt any significant hit to the support uh, of the no, fan not base? At all. Not at all. I, and when you're in the game, you don't. You know, I don't think you hear anything from the crowd. You're, you're playing the game and trying to compete and, and win the football game. So I think if you do hear the crowd, then then you are distracted. So I don't, I don't think I didn't hear or pay attention to any of that. Are you concerned that your job situation is kind of a distraction this week? No, not at all. Uh, 66 games in, how do you kind of evaluate your process at this point? I think when we get into weekly things, we will work. Our focus is who we're playing this week, so we don't take a big macro look at where we are or what we're doing from that standpoint. I don't think you have the time. You know, you got to get third down, you got to get that zone, in, you got to be coming out, uh, you got to be concerned with that. And every week in a, is almost a season when you look at when it comes to football. So kind of how your week ebbs and flows, and what does a Sunday look like? What does a Monday look like in terms of that? So that's how we we've always kind of approached it, no matter where I've been or any program that I've been a part of. So. Uh, speaking of your opponent this week, you have Caleb Williams mm -hmm. as, as the quarterback you guys are going up against. How do you guys prepare for his off-schedule kind of playmaking? Yeah, he's probably as good in the, as there is in the country. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a reason he won the Heisman Trophy last year, and he's he's a truly special player in, in, in all of college football and, and one for the ages, you know, in terms of what he's been able to do. Um, he makes some plays where you just kind of shake your head and go, oh, my God, you know. And I think he's probably the only one that can make him maybe – Mahomes at the next level. Um, I haven't seen Patrick in person, but obviously watched him on the tape, and you can see that. But he's got those type of qualities. His ability to make plays off schedule um, are as good as I've seen in person. Um, his ability to throw the ball, find open receivers, keep plays alive. It looks like he's hemmed in. He's going to be sacked, but then he keeps himself alive. I think that's a really, really special quality that he has, and I think we have to really be disciplined in our rush lanes in terms of trying to get after him and and contain him because the big plays that he makes, non-scheduled big plays, um, are, have been huge for them, not only this year, but last year. Uh, Kenny Dillingham used the swing dates uh, to mitigate offensive line issues. How, how impressive was that, was that in, in, in finding a way to mitigate a problem uh, that you have to personnel short the shortage? I thought Kenny did a good job, you know, and, and, and give them credit in terms of how they, how they came up with something that gave them an opportunity to to make plays in that game. So, um, you know, I, I told Kenny that after the game, I did a little bit shot. Uh, USC obviously made a change at the <clears throat> coordinator. Did you see on the film anything different with their defense since that move? Um, they were similar. There were some personnel changes, I think. Some guys that hadn't played much earlier in the year played in that game, and then some guys that had played in that game didn't play much, and I don't know if it was injury related or not. 
just because you don't get, kind of get that information. But there was, it seemed like there was a, a few tweaks in the lineup. Um, but basically, when you're 10 games in, your, your defense is your defense. And um, they did similar things that they had done during the year. There wasn't, you know, a totally new look. Um, I think they they worked within their system that they that they have and did things in, within their system that they have. And so I don't think there was anything specifically in the Oregon game that they hadn't shown earlier in the year, you know, that they hadn't already put on tape. But there were some changes personnel-wise. I'm a big picture guy. In fact, you gave me the nickname. Uh, big picture-wise, how do you feel you've done at UCLA? Again, I'm not, a, I'm not a big picture guy. My focus is on USC. So. And I am, so I'm okay. asking the question. I think I've done great. Okay. Based on based on your big picture. What about your what about your small picture? My small picture is we're focused on this week. And I think that's what you have to do. And I'm not this isn't just what I do. I think almost every coach that I know is kind of that's what you focus on. You focus on what you can control and really we talk about it and I know you guys sticker when we say it, but it's about having a good Monday. You know, and I think sometimes when you get distracted by looking big picture and trying to reflect back on something, I think that's an issue. You know, you talk to sports psychologists and people like that. If if you're living in the past or you're, you're worried about the past or you're anxious about the future, you're wasting eighty percent of your your cognitive bandwidth. You, know, you really need to focus on what you can control, and what you can control is really having a good Monday and keeping your players focused and keeping your coaching staff focused on what we have to do. And we have to play a really, really talented football team this week. Um, and they've lost a couple games themselves, but it's you turn the tape on and you know how talented this football team is that you're playing, and and they can explode at any second so you know that's really what's got our attention on what's got our focus when you do with the i imagine you have to take time to reflect at some point to make adjustments to your process if you find there's process failures right sure when do you take the time yeah, to do the that? off season we do all our quality control work. scheme wise personnel wise how we do things protocols and things like that we do that every off season that's a quality control work that we've done every year that we've been here so Thank you. Good. All right, thanks, Thank you. Thank you.